You're watching Hindustan Times and I am Aditi Prasad. The one key takeaway from the Congress Working Committee meeting on Monday is that the grip of the Gandhis on the grand old party remains intact. The meeting, of course, started out on a stormy note with the letter, uh, or the now famous letter by the 23 senior party leaders, uh, you know, at the helm of it. But uh, it sort of ended in a whimper with the party reaffirming their faith in the Gandhis, in particularly Sonia Gandhi and and Rahul Gandhi. I'm joined by suspended, and I underline suspended here, Congress leader Sanjay Dha today to understand his take on what transpired at the CWC yesterday. Sanjay, your take on what happened? Well, Aditi, I was not the fly on the wall. Uh, you know, maybe a suspended fly is not allowed to enter into those very sacrosanct premises. Um, but on a serious note, uh, I do believe that the CWC resolution uh, was half-baked, a mixed blessing of sorts. Uh, no tangible action plan going forward. And end of day, just a reassurance that there will be a committee to support the Congress president. And there is a proposal to have the AICC session within the next six months to elect a new leader. Uh, the question that anybody will ask is why didn't this happen a year earlier? Now, I think there are people who are saying that the pandemic came in the way, but the pandemic happened in the month of March this year. But between right. June of last year till the February of this year, there's a precious eight months, the Congress party could have easily convened an AICC session and put an end to this entire you know, suspension issue, or what I call is the animated suspension or suspended animation of who is the Congress president. Right. So, uh, you know, of course, uh, we, uh, you know, there was a great criticism of the fact that, you know, what is happening and the, in the forum, uh, you know, a sac sacrosanct forum where security was very high, where phones were taken away of all the participants before they went into the meeting. Uh, but yet, uh, you know, minute by minute uh, updates of what was happening in that meeting was out in the out in the public domain, out in the media. Um, and uh, so clearly, uh, you know, your does this mean, you know, that the letter by the dissenters and the points that they raised do not find resonance in the larger party? You know, after all, the dissenting men members were a minority in the CWC and they were sort of uh, taken to task uh, for writing the quote-unquote cruel letter. Well, Aditi, I, I don't call them dissenters. I think they are the democratic uh, voice of the Congress party. The Congress party is not a monopoly of a group of individuals. It's a political movement that uh, morphed into a great political party, fought for India's freedom, and uh, intrinsically or inherently uh, has strong democratic norms that have over the last couple of decades completely obliterated. So if you look at the content of the letter, I would like to you know, challenge anybody who says that I'm a true congressman to tell me what do they find objectionable in the suggestions that have been made. If anybody says that I object to the fact that the Congress should have a president who is dynamic, accessible, visible, on the ground, motivating cadres, galvanizing uh, people, engaging with the media, having an intellectual, cerebral bent of mind, does anybody have an objection to that as being qualities of a Congress president? Does anybody object or have serious reservations about there being a transparent election to that post or the fact that the Congress Working Committee, where no elections have been held since 1997, that they should be held today, that the Congress Parliamentary Party or the board should be actually an internal democratic process of election. These are fundamental points. The letter also talks about the fact that we must make an outreach to Mr. Sharad Pawar, uh, Mamta Banerjee, Jagan Mohan Reddy, and there are several other you know, Congress outfits that have emerged uh, post the splits that have happened. So it's a very proactively progressive letter written in, in, I believe, a very professional and a mature tone and tenor. It even says that the Gandhi family are integral to the political strategy going forward. What is wrong with the letter? So if the Congress Working Committee yesterday did not take cognizance of the details of the of the letter, the minute uh, nitty gritties of the suggestions, then I think, uh, frankly speaking, what were the seven hours spent on? Right. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, my 
my take on this and and i want to be uh, very very uh, clear about this is that you know there are there are critics of the congress who would who have come forward and who said that this entire exercise was a sham and that it was it is just it was just a way for the you know because there was a letter that came out by, that was sent out by the uh, 23 uh, you know senior congress leaders and then there was another parallel letter which was floated on the eve of the uh, eve of the cwc you know expressing confidence in the leadership of sonia gandhi and rahul gandhi and and uh, which was uh, again copy pasted and you know uh, circulated uh, by a lot of state level uh, mps and mlas of the congress uh, so you know this the, you know madhya pradesh minister and a bjp leader you know uh, narottam mishra gave a very interesting analogy yesterday he said congress is like a school where one may study as hard as they might but the headmaster's son will always come first can a non gandhi actually ever lead the congress party well clearly the school needs a new curriculum there is no denying that and aditi the fundamental point is that in the last 6 years after two lok sabha election routs uh, reduced to 44 and 52 seats losing several state elections uh, losing in fact very talented leaders like jyotiraditya sindhya to the bjp uh, giving up governments in karnataka and madhya pradesh and almost losing rajasthan we haven't had a single discussion internally uh, on why have we begun to falter and fail why is the party fumbling normal c- circumstances by now there should have been 20 such meetings not even one such dialogue has actually happened with the gravitas it deserves the right. famous ak antony report i don't know how many people have even accessed that what is the party doing do we need to lose another 2 3 elections to wake up and smell the coffee therefore i very often call that the congress has become like the rip van winkle we are in a deep slumber snoozing and snoring away as if we are not affected at all by the debacles and the devastating defeats so the simple answer is that this letter signed not by 23 but there are over 300 more people who are supporting this letter by the way or leaders across the country representing various states this is a call for change everyone who signed on this letter is a passionate ideologically committed congress uh, leader I mean, look right. at the the track record of Mr. Gulam Nabi Azad, Mr. Anand Sharma, Mr. Kapil Sibal, Dr. Sashi Tharoor. Uh, you know, Renuka Chaudhary has been there for a long time. Mr. Huda has been a former Chief Minister. Pithvi Raj Chavan is a former Chief Minister. Raj Babur has been a hugely popular personality. Then you have Milind Devra, Manish Tiwari, Jitin Prasad, and guess what? Kumari Selja said yesterday. Kumari Selja, who's probably got the eyes and ears of the Congress High Command, said that these twenty-three people. are bjp agents now these are absolutely ridiculous reprehensible comments being made by the congress party which needs to be extremely open to feedback you know i would just recommend that everyone in the congress go back to the history of the splits mrs gandhi split the party in 1978 and congress i was born and guess what aditi what were her two grouses that the party is drifting which is exactly what is happening today and the right. fact that the aicc is not meeting to discuss the issues which is happening today but the 23 leaders and the 300 others are not talking about splitting the party they are talking about you know discussing things in a transparent fashion and reviving internal democracy if anybody has an objection to this i mean it's absolutely ridiculous and absurd you have been a you yourself have been a, a very uh, uh, ardent uh, uh defender of the congress party as a spokesman for years and uh, you know you been in the party for years your opinion on why why is no one willing to listen why is the congress president today the interim congress president today sorry refusing to listen to these cries for help to cohesively uh, get the party together get the drift of the party together frankly it foxes me uh because the congress party has had its ups you know in a parliamentary democracy you win some elections you lose some elections there's nothing wrong with losing an election here and there but you need to take stock of why you're losing i mean unless there are some people in the congress party who are so masochistic that they're getting a delight out of losing then i have then probably you know we are on a brilliant track at the moment but the fact is 
that today the BJP is dismantling uh, the Congress party in the elections and the BJP is having a free hand in running the country. Uh, but we have serious problems in the economy, uh, with the pandemic, uh, joblessness, record unemployment. There's a rural distress has in fact got from bad to worse. You have foreign policy and national security issues with China happening at the borders. There are multiple reasons why the Congress should have been batting on the front foot. Instead, we have created disorder in our own house. Now, I heard a statement yesterday that, uh, you know, we should wait for the right time. Well, in six years, if the party hasn't found the right time, uh, then I don't know what is supposed to be this, you know, this very heavenly opportune moment for the Congress party to, uh, you know, get together. Some kind of a cosmic shift will have to happen for the Congress party to make a move. I mean, there are deep concerns for the people who are workers for the party who fight to the ground level, Aditi. So I would just say that today internal democracy has vaporized in the party and no one is willing to listen. I wrote a couple of op-eds because no one otherwise is willing to have a conversation, right? And because I write an op-ed making some suggestions, I'm suspended and sacked. And there was talk yesterday that the 23 leaders with, with such great political experience uh, could face punishment. The very fact that we are even having this conversation or people being reprimanded for writing a letter, I think tells right. you that the Congress party has some serious internal fault lines.